Here we have a Heathkit condenser checker, or capacitor checker in modern terms. Oh, this is a model C2 from probably around 1950, 51, somewhere around that in that time period. I got this off off of someone on the uh, ARF forum, and as you can see, someone has cut the power cord, but. It looks to be in pretty good shape cosmetically. There's a few little scratches on it. So now we'll open this up and see what the inside looks like and try to get it back in operating condition. Uh, not only do I collect vintage radios and record players and such, but I also collect vintage pieces of test equipment. And a lot of this old test equipment I, is, I still use. And, you know, can be useful in modern day society, so to speak. And here's the inside of the condenser tester. See all these old capacitors that need to be replaced. And I'll also measure the resistors, and any resistors that are out of spec will be replaced as well. This is a two tube unit. It uses a, see, what is this, a Type 12A6 and a type, I believe, 1629 for the magic eye tube, which I'm happy for that, because 1629s are cheaper than the old 6E5 and 6U5 magic eye tube, should this one end up being weak, which wouldn't surprise me one bit if it was weak. Okay, now let's get started on this. Okay, continuing the work on the Heath Kit condenser tester. Uh, unfortunately, we have some precision resistors here, and this one here, the end literally pulled out while I was trying to test it. Uh, I don't have these values in stock, so I just had to uh, place an order with Mauser Electronics to get the correct resistors, as well as some more things that I needed. These precision resistors are part of the bridge network and in order for this uh, instrument to be accurate these resistors need to be very close tolerance like one percent resistors the same goes for a few capacitors in here this is a two microfarad capacitor this is a 0 0.02 microfarad capacitor and this is a 200 picofarad capacitor all these are so-called precision capacitors that need to be very close tolerance in order for the unit to be accurate when measuring capacitance. Now I ordered 3% capacitors for this application which should be satisfactory. In fact I already had a .02 capacitor that was close enough tolerance. But then on the other hand, I'm not going to be using this instrument to determine the actual value of capacitors that much. For that, we have more modern and more accurate digital meters for that purpose. This instrument will primarily be used for uh, testing leakage of capacitors. But even still, I want the thing to be as accurate as possible. You know, I want it to be as close to the way it was from the factory as I can get it. However, while we're waiting on those extra parts to come in, we can do as much as we can now. Uh, this capacitor here is a .5 microfarad, not a precision cap, so, you know, it doesn't have to be that close tolerance. However, I did not have a 0.5 microfarad, so I just took uh, a couple of 0.2 microfarads and a 0.1 microfarad, wired those three in parallel to give me the 0.5 microfarad. Uh, originally, this capacitor had very long leads on it, much longer than what the uh, new replacement capacitor had. And I really don't like capacitors just dangling down. So what I did was I soldered a terminal strip here to the power transformer and I have our capacitor soldered across this terminal strip with the wires running off of the lugs of the terminal strip going to the correct place in the circuit. 
Now we're going to replace these electrolytic filter capacitors. These are 8 microfarad 475 working volt. Well there again I don't have anything with that high of working voltage. So just wired a couple of 22 microfarad caps in series and that will give us 11 microfarad at 900 working volts. When you wire a capacitor in series the working voltage doubles and the capacitance value gets cut in half. So uh, 11 microfarads versus 8 microfarads, that won't pose a problem at all. And we have this capacitor here, which is a uh, mica mode bomb, or mica bomb. I believe it's a 0 .01 microfarad. I can guarantee you this is leaky without even testing it, so we'll go ahead and replace that while we're working on this tonight. Okay, we're about to a stopping point until I get the other parts that I've ordered. So let's see, I replaced these two electrolytics. You can see I have them mounted on terminal strips here. Because like I said, I don't like things dangling. And we have this 0.5 microfarad cap, 0 0.01 microfarad cap, and two 0 0.01 microfarad caps wired in parallel to give us a 0 0.02 microfarad cap. And that did come from the factory that way. That's not something, or let's put it this way, this part was supplied this way with the kit. But while we're waiting on those other parts to arrive, we can at least analyze what we've removed from this unit. And we're now testing the 0 0.01 microfarad uh, mica bomb. And it's not registering anything on the uh, capacitance bridge. Let's check it for leakage. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not even... We're applying about 50 volts and we're leaky as all get out. So that one's bad. And this 0.02 microfarad cap is really not registering anything on the uh, capacitance scale. Let's check it for leakage. Well, I put it on the right range. Yeah, this one's not as bad as the mica bomb, but it's still leaky beyond acceptability. Now the 0.5 microfarad cap is reading a little bit on the capacitance scale. Let's check it for leakage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's bad too. And now one of the 8 microfarad mighty midgets have a fairly high power factor reading here, about 25%. Let's test it for leakage. And it's pretty leaky. As you can tell, we're not even at 200 volts yet, and the eye is not even opening. And now Mighty Might number two also has a p high power factor rating. Let's check its leakage. Yep, it's pretty bad also. And now the huge two microfarad cap and the bridge circuit, the precision capacitor. Uh-huh, very leaky. No surprise. Okay, we're back on the Heath Kit condenser tester. And I have most everything that was bad replaced, including all of the capacitors and most of the resistors and the power cord. However, I uh, did something stupid whenever I was ordering the resistors. There were several values that called for one watt, and like a dummy, I ordered one half watt. And this was one such resistor here. I just put three resistors in parallel to give me the uh, correct value at one watt. 
the rest of these resistors are in the uh, leakage test circuit so they determine the uh, actual voltage being applied for leakage test and they are a little bit out of tolerance but they're not bad enough to prevent us from running a little test on this thing to see how it operates so far. Okay, we're lit up. Our eye tube's a little dim, but it's still bright enough to see. We'll eventually replace that with a nice bright new tube, but that's not something we have to do today. Now let's connect a modern .047 microfarad capacitor up to this and see how it tests. Okay, in order to test for capacitance, you set this knob to the appropriate range. Set this knob to, in our case, paper and mica capacitors, and then we set this knob for maximum eye deflection, or eye opening, and we're reading about 0 .044 microfarad, so that's about as accurate as you could expect. Now to test for leakage, we go over here. And if the capacitor is leaky, well, you keep and if the capacitor is leaky, the neon lamp here will flash constantly or glow steady, depending on how bad and leaky the capacitor is. Okay, let's get a known leaky capacitor and see how it tests. And now we're testing the 0.01 microfarad uh, mica bomb cap that was one of the leaky capacitors that came out of this very instrument. Now let's see how it does on a leakage test. Ooh! I'd say that's very leaky. Well, there's actually no need in going up higher because if it leaks at 25 volts, then it's obviously going to leak at a higher voltage. Now we're testing a 0.01 microfarad cap. It's not registering anything on the capacitance meter. And you can see the light is blinking on 25 volts, which it's, means the capacitor is not as leaky as the mica bomb, but it's still leaky enough to not want to use it in a circuit. And when we move up to 100 volts or 200 volts or whatever this next section is, yep, 200 volts, the light doesn't even flash anymore, it just glows. Now testing an 8 microfarad electrolytic. We're registering about 10 microfarad on the capacitance scale. We have our knobs, power factor knobs set to electrolytic capacitors. And we rotate this power factor knob for maximum eye opening, which is about right here. And that's about that. 3% power factor, modern day term is ESR, so that's not too bad. Now let's check our leakage. You know, this seems to be pretty leaky. Now we're testing a modern 10 microfarad electrolytic. Our power factor is oh, probably about one and a half, maybe. Our leakage and that's as high up as I want to go on the leakage. So you see how the leakage test works between a good and a bad capacitor. Okay, there you go, the Heathkit C2 condenser tester. I'll probably do a part two on this, but for right now, thanks for watching and more to come later.